What's up? So today I wanted to do somewhat of a tool pouch uh, review of the Diamondback setup that I run. I've got the side by side on my right. I have the Elias on my left. The Cobra clip belt. The gun loop. And the six inch padded back belt. Uh, I'm six foot tall, 150 pounds, slim guy. I found that this six inch belt adds a lot of uh, six inches back here, so it adds a lot of back stability, almost like a brace, so to speak. It's very comfortable. And I have the extra small belt. Uh, fits me pretty well, size 31 waist. So I wanted to do a little bit of a pouch dump, so to speak, and kind of show you guys what I carry as a trim carpenter, framer, remodeler. Kind of just a little bit of everything. So we'll start on the left side, dive into it here. Um, we're doing a project outside, so I do have some three and a quarter, 131s, 21 degree, I'll carry those. There's five racks, fits pretty comfortably in this outside pouch. Also carry GRK, I think this is number nine or number 10. Three and an eight screws. I've got the Empire uh, seven inch speed square. Easy to read. So that's on that side there. I also have the Empire um, little speed square again. I've got the Makita blade wrench because that saw is a phenomenal saw, but there's no storage for this tool on the saw itself, so. Here I've got the Fiskers drywall jab saw. The reason I run this um, is because it's got this sheath, so it fits nice right there. Speaking of sheaths, if I can get this loose here. That is one thing I do like about the Diamondback, it's got pouches and you know places for things that are very thought out they hold it very well they don't drop they don't come loose things like that this is the holdifers uh one inch chisel with this chisel you can lay it completely flat on a workpiece. Um, it's swedish made so it hold it's been holding a very sharp edge haven't had to touch it up yet it's got the polymer strike cap on the end for when you're using your hammer it's not metal on metal. It's got a comfortable grip. It's oval. If you can see it's slimmer this way than it is this way. And of course the sheath. It can go in either way. And then it clicks in there. It's got a little pouch, little breathing room for debris to like fall out so it doesn't get packed full. And I just shoved that right here. I believe that that's like a perfect fit for it because it like fits right under this pouch. I just fold it down. I carry the Empire, yeah, nine inch level. So it's LED lit, I don't know if you can see that. Push a button and it changes. Chalk box. And then this here, this little clevis hook deal for all these bits. If you can see that. These are all GRK bits, shoulder straps would be. This loop here would be for like a rubber mallet or like a trim hammer if you wanted to run one of those. So on the right side, of course, the stiletto 14 ounce titanium. It's a hickory handle. Love this hammer. I went with the smooth face. I have the hammer holster sleeve right here. Tucks in behind the pouch. Super easy in and out. Love that. Again with the Holdifers, I've got the Holdifers pencil, carpenter's pencil. It's mechanical, it's a deep reach. You can get into you know narrow areas and mark things. It's an aluminum body, and this shape is actually very close to like a actual carpenter's pencil. So I like that about it. You can pull the lead. Oh, I almost need new lead. Um, and then on board right here is your sharpener. And you can get that to a super fine point. 
twist this. The lead's probably four and a half, maybe five inches long. Come sharpened already. Stanley Fat Max, I don't know, it's great tape. Wide blade, retracts perfectly. Fits great in here. I do notice that I have a paint can opener in here right now. Been doing some painting lately. And also in the bottom of there would be my countersink bit for like construction screws and stuff. I believe this is a number 10, which would be 1164s. Yep. Next, I've got the Craig 90 degree driver. The thing I like about this is it's all aluminum, excuse me, it's all metal. Helpful when you need it. Again, I'm a trim carpenter, do a little bit of remodeling, all sorts of stuff. So I carry this 150 grit sandpaper, just a little piece for, you know, touching pieces up. I also carry, um, this is Tight Bond brand called Quick and Thick. It, for CA glue, I use Bob Smith Industries off of Amazon. I use their Maxi Cure. It's a little bit thicker. Um, it, almost an instant setup. That takes like 10 seconds and it's rock solid. The activator with the glue, put it on your piece, hold it together, you're good to go. That side is still, again on my right, or still on my right, I've got the Milwaukee. I just recently picked this up. This is a Milwaukee, I believe it's like a 13 in one. Yeah. 13 in one. It's insulated, so you can use it for electrical. I've got that in here. These are snap-on pliers, great pliers. The teeth are milled right here, so you can grab onto you know pin nails, pull those out, do whatever you need to do. And then I've got some cheap uh, wire strippers in here. I'm not too fond of these because this happens. Sharpie, just your regular. These are Milwaukee Sharpies. I've got the Milwaukee pen light. Much. This is Milwaukee's huge chisel tip marker. What do I use that for? I use this for marking studs. Sometimes I go around the room before I do the trim and mark the studs on the floor. Precision Tools Stud Finder. This is a great piece. So you can see here it lights up all across here. When it comes in contact with the stud, I'll just use my finger for right now, but there's like 13 or 14 sensors across here. And it'll show you, you know, which side of the stud it is. It has a little level on it. And then it has on the top here, just a little ruler. I typically carry that here when I don't have nails. Next I have, I don't know what this, okay. This is a Fisker's utility knife. So there's a little detent on this side flips open. I like this because it has like an actual blade lock. You see I can push that up and down. Lennox gold blades, excuse me, carbide. Um, I like this tool for a couple different reasons. A, the utility knife locks open, press the detent, flips down. There's a bucket opener on this side, so I do a lot of flooring, a lot of paint, five gallon bucket opener right here, pry the bucket open. Uh, on the tool blade storage and then also like this is advertised as a painter's knife There's a little bit for taking off cover plates right here. It goes in the end. You can use this as a little screwdriver Next I just picked this up um, It's a Saker miter gauge So you can open and close it You can read your miters Your miters nice and clean you're a little bit lazier, you can use this guy. This is a digital miter gauge. Just picked this up off of Amazon as well. I've seen some guys running it. This is a trim buddy. Little trim buddy, if you can read that up here. This is for perfect margins or consistent margins, hanging doors, things like that. It's got an eighth inch, quarter, three eighths and a half, and a three quarter uh, little scribe lines. Two inch ruler, gives you a perfect quarter inch margin all the way around the door so you can set your casing perfectly and consistently. Uh, Super 33 electrical tape, 
use this for a lot of stuff band-aids when you need to things like that uh, this is stretchy it's good I keep it in the case so it stays clean um, and then up here I've got the blaze what model is this the blaze GLM 165-22 this is a laser gauge laser tape measure and I do love this tool quite a bit this is all major you know like closet rod shove it in there boom perfect if I need to do a long piece of trim on the baseboard put it in the corner shoot across and then you can set on this particular model whether you want a plus 16th plus a 32nd so you can do 32nd 16th 8th 3 sixteenths or a quarter I believe so if you're doing the pressure fit on your baseboard that's kind of nice and I found that this thing is very, very accurate. Uh, it's down to like a, a 264, so a 30 second, something like that. And then on the back, I've got the gun loop. So that's pretty much what I carry. That gets me pretty far. Uh, I don't ever find myself running into issues of not having a tool. It's been a good setup. When I first got this pouch setup, let me pan down. You can see here. When I first got this pouch set up, I was concerned with this right pouch, which would be the side by side from Diamondback. I was concerned with it, like how big it was, but it, what it was is when I first got it, it stuck out like this because all the weight hadn't like compressed or worked everything into place. So I thought it was like a small child's backpack hanging off my hip, but the more I use it, I do like it. I just wish that. Maybe I could eliminate these two pouches, and then if I did that, I would just run my tape up here, where I run my digital tape. But it's just so much more difficult, not like second nature to put my tape in here and then get it out. So, something I don't use as often, and then I just run my tape down here. So with that again, I've got pencil, screwdriver, pen light, wire strippers, pliers, um, Sharpie, utility knife, and then the big, marker that you've seen for marking studs my miter gauges are right here the trim buddies down in here and then right inside of here there's plenty of room for multiple things but just have electrical tape down in there here's my 90 degree little utility screwdriver my quick and thick wood glue paint marker fill stick sandpaper tape measure pencil that's very second nature. Didn't mean to drop that. That's real second nature. I love this tool. That's probably one of my favorites. Hammer, of course. Gotta have the speed, have the uh, stiletto. Wood handle. I've noticed, I used to run an East Wing um, rubber grip in here. And what I've noticed was it was much more difficult to slide that handle in here. I've heard guys talking about taping the bottom like two inches of the handle for a rubber handle to slide in there a little bit better, but then you're gonna have that adhesive like working up the handle. How ugly and annoying. Plus, admire this hickory handle. That thing's beautiful. Titanium head, stiletto. On the right side, excuse me, left side, got a little disoriented. I carry my fasteners down here. When I don't have nails with me, but with this pouch as well, like you're carrying something you don't want to drop, there is a Velcro, Velcro like cover for it, so you can Velcro that off. Then you won't drop your fasteners and whatnot. But I've just found that I take care of it and don't drop my pouch and whatnot. Empire Speed Square again. And then there's two slots inside of this pouch as well. I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up or not, but there's, I, I put all my long bits up front here, but you could store them in here like that. But I was training myself to be a left-handed speed square. So then it was grab my speed square, grab my pencil, mark, put back, put back, grab my soft, 
So I'm training myself to be left-handed and there's no real comfortable place for it on the right side over here. I've got a little six inch rule for real intricate measuring. And then again, I have my six inch bits, T25 and a Phillips, those are your most common. Quarter inch extension. And then I also run a P2, excuse me, a square two. I've got my, in here, blade wrench. You can see the jab saw. Again, nine inch digital or light up level. Fits great right there. Same as the old Titan flat bar. And then just a Stanley pry bar. Two different styles. So this one's more for pulling nails. This one's for adjusting or prying um, pieces of trim work. Here are those two right there. Hold the first chisel. Right here. Chalk box. And then off of my suspender loop is my star drive bits. All in, I'm probably, I don't know, there's probably six to seven, maybe $800 in tools in here by the time you add it all up. So this is the Cobra clip. You just press these gold deals or the brass and then it clicks in. Never have problems with this coming loose. The belt's stiff, never comes loose. So they're padded back six inch. It's a great deal. And then you can see in here how the hammer holster is. I thought that'd be uncomfortable or annoying at first and it's actually not bad. I do enjoy that. So again, that's what I carry. Hopefully this helps somebody and you can get like 90% of this stuff on Amazon, Home Depot, Menards, 